Yo, what's good, YouTube? Y'all know me. It's your boy, MacDZ, back up in there. And today, it's the end of the year, y'all. Oh my goodness, 2020 is over! Yes, finally. It's been a heck of a year, but it's actually also been a pretty decent year in tech and... I guess my finding of tech that's available out there. So I kind of want to preface this by saying this is not just the best of the best for 2020. This is more of the best of the best for me and how it worked out for my year and how I utilize that tech. So let's get started uh, without further ado. The first thing I want to start off with is actually something that we all consider very boring <laughs> and that's home storage. Um, this year, my solution for home storage in 2020 has actually been IBI. IBI, right over here in the back corner, is by SanDisk. It's a storage hub device for your home, or you can utilize it in your business as well. Um, but what you can do is you can access it from the app or from a website, the IBI site, of course. And it makes it easy for you to back up all of your devices um, throughout your home into one area that has shareable images. So whether those images are stills, videos, or whatever else like documentation that you'd like to keep track of for your home, you can do so on the IBI hub. Now, um, can you use it for programming hubs? That I've not actually got into, so that might be a course of action that they could do, but I'm not certain. But the reason why I haven't really put it to the test is because IBI only comes in one solution. That's one terabyte. And one terabyte is something that I've already filled up one of. So I've actually got two IBIs around the house already. And anytime you take a picture or images or anything like that with your phones um, or your tablets or screenshots or whatever, it backs it up to that. So that's why I think it was kind of easy to fill up with so many devices in my home. Um, now, that would be my only complaint um, is really that. However, if they wanted to maybe make a version two of the IBI, I think what they may want to do is go into the um, ability for you to choose your storage size. So if I could maybe get a two terabyte or a four or an eight, so on and so forth, um, that I think that could be a solution for moving forward with IBI, um, you know, so tell me what you guys think. If you guys got one of those, by the way, this year and have uh, found different uses for it, please go right ahead down below and let me know. Uh, there are other solutions out there, but for me, that was the best solution for 2020. Now, portable storage. Being able to carry storage, um, stored information with you is a must for a lot of us out there. And so to get a little brighter here, uh, my solution this year, um, has been something that's been a solution for a very long time, apparently. <laughs> of course, we all know about SSDs. My SSD of choice this year, the portable one for me, is the T7. Now, this does actually come in two formats. It comes in the um, one right here that you see with no fingerprint scanner or anything of that nature on there. But this year, for 2020, they actually did make the Samsung with a thumbprint or fingerprint scanner that you can that's right here in that area that you can utilize as you see fit that makes it easier to utilize with things like your tablets which aren't the the program to for the password protection is not accessible for that so if that's something that is interesting to you please go ahead again down below and let me know um but as there are so many different solutions from amazon and everything else that's out there. This one was my, my one of choice because of the read write speed that they have on the T7, making it an obvious choice for you know content creators. However, if you're a student and want something reliable, you know, like a reliable unit out there, giggity, there's actually also the RAV Power one that I've, I've used in the past, and you guys have seen me with those, of course and they have a ton of, of other solutions as well on Amazon as well. But just be careful, some of those with the extra, you know, extra cheap ones may sometimes give you that, you know, extra uh, things that come with it, like issues, whether they be, um, 
you know, accessible by other parties, so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. Next up, uh, the phone of choice this year. For 2020, uh, which I don't actually, I'm not one of those people that change out my phone every every year or every day or every month, like other tech gurus out there and tech um, people out there. But mine this year that I did update was the actual Note 20 Ultra by Samsung. Um, I did not do the whole, hey, let me put it in a big, big case, but I did put it in just a small one here. This one is provide, this one was by who, honey? These cases, do you recall? No? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll actually link that down below who I got this case from. I, I, have, I have a bunch of them, so I'm not sure about this one. Um, but if you are somebody who is in that Android life, there are a lot of choices out there, of course, but Samsung is one that works for me because I do have a day job. And because of that, um, this out, actually this phone allows me to be extra product, uh, productive. And, um, but there are many choices out there. The one pluses is one that a lot of tech people I see talking about for their end of the year wrap up as their favorite phone of choice. And of course there's your iOS solutions out there as well for your Apple people. Enjoy those as well. Computer solutions. Now I am somebody who uses, um, who uses Premiere by Adobe for, um, editing my videos. And so that meant that I had to get a PC and my PC of choice this year for 2020 has actually been the Dell. Uh, this is the XPS 17 and, um, I didn't get the version with the full 4K touchscreen because I actually have separate monitors for editing. But if that is something that you're going to be using as your only um, monitor, then for the color for the color rendition that you get on that 4K screen, it is phenomenal. The trackpad, the tracking itself, and the keyboard, everything is very amazing. Um, if you don't want to believe the hype and are willing to wait on those new Macs that are coming out with the M1 chip, I hear that the 14 inch that has the, um, that has the new chip, of course, but also has some other bells and whistles that will be coming out next year in 2021 might be a solution for you, um, as well. So, you know, if you are somebody who's also skillful at, you know, um, I want to say, I guess getting your own programs to put into your, put into your systems, then, um, you know, the Dell is not a bad solution, but if you go to the Dell site, they can already put those, um, some softwares of your choice on there for you. I actually, for this one in particular, I had them put on the, um, Adobe Premiere because I wanted to see how they did it. Um, I was, I was, I guess I was fine with that. It was okay. It was an okay, you know, I, listen, I've got, I've got a, a Dell desktop that I built, you know, a gaming one that I built, you know, with the i5 and the whole nine and it, you know, it's cool. And with the iMac, I tricked it out as well. So listen, I've had many builds in the past. I just didn't have the time this year, especially with everything going on that I wanted to uh, dedicate to getting a new unit. So giggity again. So I made sure. And when I was ordering this one from Dell that I, I had them put all the bells and whistles that I could, um, that was going to be hopefully helpful for me. The one minus that I did find is that I did have to call customer service to activate a few things at times when they just made it, they just made it a little bit, uh, difficult <laughs> to say the least. Next up, let's go with listening devices. Okay. Let's stop talking all this background stuff, home stuff. Let's talk about more of the stuff we came here for the listening devices, my earbuds of choice this year in 2020, not the JBLs, not the Sony's, not this, not that, um, you know, Hey, this year it went with ear fun. I know, right? Yes. The ear fun earbuds. These were presented at CES this year at 2020 CES 2020. And actually they do live up to the hype. The IPX rating was great. The price is great. The quality is great. Um, the ease of use, no matter which earbud I tried for the year, I just, I just kept coming back to this one. Um, this is what I found. And if you are somebody who has never, you know, 
who has ever he heard that expression, a jack of all trade, but a master of none. That's a perfect description for these. They don't do everything off the chain. Just, you know, just enough to make sure that you remember and then you compare with other with other products that you have. So when it comes to like bass, of course, the JBLs are better, but they don't have the call, same call quality. The charging is better on this because some like the um, the Amazons, um, the Amazon Echoes, those came with um, type uh, or micro USB charging rather than type C charging. You know, so it's just little things here and there that just all around, it just made it the, the best experience I had. Um, next up, let's go to my headphones of choice. All right, and my headphones of choice um, actually go to Soundcore this year. And the Soundcore that I have is actually two different types. The two types this year for Soundcore are the Q10s and the Q30s. Yes, there was a Q20 in there, um, but I didn't utilize it this year. That was the wife's. It's but awesome. <laughs> she will let you know that she liked it. Um, the Q10 for bass and bass heaviness is off the chain. They even have that little, where is it? Extra bass button here, as you guys can see. Love that. Um, and again, these are not the best at any one category, but because they were enough to do everything, I just happened, a, a little bit of everything, I liked it. Like being able to turn in and out, the air, the air cups, you know? The ease to see which side is which side. The button placement, the cups, <laughs> giggity. Uh, the way that these, these extend, the way that these work. I mean, it's just, they just work, okay? Yeah, just take my word, no, I'm just play. <laughs> they work. So let's go on to speakers. As you can see, we have a plethora here. And so I'm gonna start off with the small one. And the small speakers actually this year go to the Stormbox by Tribit. Now this small square is on par with the Bose um, Sound, what is it, Sound Link? or Sound Mini Link, or Sound Link Mini. You know, that Bose one that I'm talking about, that square one. It even has the little extra grippy thing in the back here uh, that allows it, that magic thing that allows it to hook onto anything. So whether you put this on your, sh on, your sh on your shoulders, on your backpack, whatever, you can clip it onto there. You can lay flat by those feet that are there. It's loud and in charge. I really dig this. And for the price range, it's amazing. Um, most days, uh, what I also found was, was very usable type C charging one cable to rule them all. Love that. Um, uh, <laughs> mid size this year. Okay. So last year I went off on this product on, on this company's product this year, they came back strong. And that goes to the PL7 by LG. Now I know I straight up bashed them last year for the PK lineup. And the reason why was because of connectivity. Now, even after the update, the PK lineup still was very poor in connectivity. But this PL7, and I say mid-size, even though this is the biggest one because it's on par with like the uh, XB33 or the charge lineups. Okay. So it's right around that same size. So for me, that makes it mid-size. Next up, um, I want to go over my bookshelf or a large, what they call the large category for the portable speakers. Okay. And for me, I call them bookshelves because those are the ones you kind of pair up, you get two, you pair them up and you put them in some part of your house. Hopefully, you know, they can, they can run your, your, one of your TVs. They can run your computer, Bluetooth. They can do whatever, right? But they're not ones you're going to hopefully carry around with you everywhere you go. And those this year go to the XB43 by Sony. And I'm not going to qualify that by saying that they are this or that, but I just found them to be the best for the money because you can regularly find them on sale, whether it be on Amazon or their own site. And in regards to sites, I'm going to, Put a link for everything that I'm talking about here 
for you guys um, so you guys can take a look for yourselves. Next up uh, is my Beach Outdoor speaker and that actually goes to the JBL Boombox 2. I know it took a while for JBL to show up on this list, but I, you know what? I don't even have mine here in the lab as you know, we're doing this family get together and whatnot. So as we're getting those things prepared for the zoom, uh, what's called the uh, family not gathering, it's a zoom delight. <laughs> um, I have the, I have the room and everything already set up for that. And that's where my JBL is so that we can party. And, but I do have the boom box one uh, back there to represent for JBL. So you guys can see them in the picture, but don't worry. I'll link to them as well, where you can find that boom box too. And these are loud, big, and can be heard or really felt from a good distance away. My only gripe, honestly, with JBL and probably why you don't see them more on this list is their price is just way too high for things. Out of control, JBL, out of control. Now, finally, um, in as far as speakers are concerned, are the home systems. So the one by Sonos, and in this case, the One SL. Again, enough said. Sonos, especially. Come on, if you're in, in if you're in the iOS uh, sphere, life. Sony, uh, the Sonos has got to be uh, something that's that's really on your list of things to have. The way that they've integrated the AirPlay, um, the phenomenal way that you can add all the different areas, whether it be your Apple Music, whether it be your um, your YouTube Music, whether it be your Oh, <sighs> Pandora, uh, Spotify, blah, 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 like literally everything you can be, you can add to there. And the reason why I went with the One SL is because I have a lot of devices that are already listening to me in the house. Um, but for like 20 bucks more, you can get just the one which has that, um, which has the mics that are always on and listening for you as well. Uh, my only quip with them actually is the app. And I'm one of those people that an app can really change my opinion of your whole product. It's not as intuitive as, as I thought it would be, but you know, it, it, it works. It's just not as intuitive as I thought it would be. But anyway, um, want to kind of wrap this up. Uh, certain things that people also ask me about all year round lighting. Um, I use GVM a lot. That's the great video makers. Uh, there's a lot of those around my house. Um, I use a lot of these types here, as you guys can see, hopefully. Okay. So, um, there's those that are around. I've got lighting everywhere around here as well. I also get asked a lot about cables and what cables I use. I use a lot of cables that, um, actually have multiple heads. <laughs> Giggity again, right? I know. Right. But, uh, what I'm talking about is like, uh, something that has, um, one end will go to your charging device, whatever that may be. And the others ends here will have the like four main areas for you. So like in this case, uh, if I can get it to focus in on it, kind of sort of. Okay. So in this case, it would be like, you know, the micro, the, the lightning cables and the, the type C. All right. All right. So that basically wraps it up here. Um, one of my, one of my things for 2020 for as far as lighting solutions for being out and about this right here, the loom cube. If you guys have heard anything about them, then you'll know how great these little tiny things are. Uh, I actually have two. I have the cube and I have the box. Um, the reason why I have these here actually that they light up devices in the front here, as you guys can see. You know, so, so that, um, the, I can actually utilize these other lights to, for the backdrops and the backgrounds while I'm using these for the foregrounds. So just certain things that I use a lot of, um, I tried to just get down for you guys for the 2020. Um, besides that, I don't think, um, anything else you guys asked me about, I really have available to me right here. So besides anything of those natures, if there's anything else you guys want to learn about, go ahead down below and let me know. For 2020, we have we had a really good year, even though it was a horrible year all around. I really just hope that we can all just be thankful that this year is done. And more importantly, that we're still here for those of us who are. For anybody who has lost somebody, 
you have my deepest, sincere sorrow and condolences. Please be safe out there. Continue to be safe. Wear a mask, though. Anyway, while you're down there checking out, leave some comments. Please go ahead. Give them thumbs, yo. Give them thumbs. And hey, always be the hero in your story, not the villain in someone else's. Peace.